Hi there, how are you? Uh, I am ready to do the next painting. I did a little drawing, you can all practice at home. <clears throat> this is what we're doing, the Wilton diptych. Uh, you may get a bit of Aladdin in the background. My daughter is watching TV, so I hope it's not too distracting. Uh, but <clears throat> painting number two, hope it brings some happiness. Let's have a look at the proper one. Uh, so, um, you had three questions for this painting. I don't know if you've checked it out already. How many angels can you find with the wings? Just over here. Um, how many kings with crowns? This section here. And can you find the mushrooms? So, here is our painting. I hope it looks all right. So, um, basically this is the Wilton Diptych. Uh, it, we don't know who painted it. It was painted in the late 1300s and it's made up of two panels. If you get a chance to go to the National Gallery when it reopens, it is a beautiful painting. And uh, divided into two, two panels, basically it opens and closes like a book. The outside is in really bad condition. Uh, a lot of the paint has flaked off. But because it was kept closed for most of its life, the interior is just in amazing condition. Um, so it's a really lovely survival. It's also a very rare survival because it's an English example of uh, religious art from before the Reformation. The Reformation is when England broke from the Roman Catholic Church and slowly became a Protestant country. That happened in the reign of Henry VIII in the 1500s and uh, <coughs> then began a hundred years of iconoclasm when we estimate between 90 and 95% of all religious art was destroyed. So this is an example of pre-Reformation religious art in England, uh, used in England, owned by somebody in England, uh, which still survives. So that makes it a really rare survivor. It's a very special piece for many reasons. So divided into two panels, we have two spheres. We have the earthly sphere here, which is pretty brown. And then we have the heavenly sphere on this side, which is um, very blue and beautiful. And it has all of these beautiful flowers down at the bottom. So zoom in on them on the National Gallery website. Um, we have in the earthly realm, four figures. Uh, we have how many kings? Three kings. They are this one, this one, and this one. The kneeling figure is a king, King Richard II, uh, although he looks quite girly, but um, he is a, a king. And uh, he is <coughs> kneeling and has a crown on his head. Um, and behind him you have uh, these two kings as well with crowns on their heads uh, but also behind him three saints and we know they're saints because they have the round um, halos on their heads uh, and these halos show us that they're divine beings so the three kings are St Edmund uh, on the uh, left hand side of the painting each one of them is holding something which tells us uh, who they are. So he's holding an arrow. This arrow is how he was martyred. He was shot uh, with an arrow. Uh, in the centre have Edward the Confessor, who is buried in Westminster Abbey. You can still see his tomb today, and he is holding a ring in his fingers. Uh, and uh, that was his symbol. And then the last one, holding a lamb, is uh, John the Baptist. Uh, and they are, if you look at their hands, they're all kind of pushing Richard over towards the heavenly sphere. They're introducing him to heaven. Um, and you can see his hands are raised almost in prayer or expectation. And that leads our eye over to this scene where we have the heavenly scene uh, with all the angels, 11 angels, double check, not good with numbers. Uh, and um, in the center have this female figure, Mary, uh, with the baby Jesus again and you already know now what he's doing with his hands because we found out about that in our last painting Margarita of Rezzo's Virgin and Child Enthroned uh, he has his hand raised in blessing and he is blessing Richard on this side so um, have the Virgin Mary and the oh you also know what's happening with her hand her hand is pointing at his foot and so that's again so that we remember what happens to him at the end of his life we can contemplate his whole his whole life and all of the stories from that. So, um, we have heaven showing their happiness at Richard being King of England. Now, what's amazing about this is that we think this was Richard II's um, uh, personal altarpiece, that he would have carried it around with him when he was travelling and um, <coughs> would have prayed to it. He had a pretty difficult reign. One activity you can do is look up the reign of Richard II. It's quite an interesting one, learn about his life. And so he would have found this very reassuring when he sat down to pray for it. 
Um, another reason why we can tell that heaven is on his side is that if you look very carefully, Richard is wearing this little badge with a white heart on it. And then you can see that all the angels around him are wearing the same badge. So heaven is showing how much they love Richard as King of England. The flag um, that's either being passed to Richard from heaven or Richard's giving it to heaven is a symbol of the resurrection, the red cross and a white flag. Um, and in the top is a tiny orb which was blown up um, with a magnifying glass to have a look at it. And in that little orb is a depiction of an island set in a silver sea. So perhaps heaven giving England to Richard to look after in the name of heaven. So pretty beautiful stuff. Now, last time we looked at Margarita Verit, so that was the Byzantine style, very flat, um, <clears throat> very instructional, didactic. It was all about telling the stories, not about creating the most beautiful image ever. This, however, is international Gothic style. Um, it's a style that ran from about 1350 to 1450, more or less, and uh, it's characterised by being very elegant, very beautiful, very expensive. So you have these beautiful S shapes to the figures, they're all very elegant, it's a lovely composition. In particular with this one, expensive. Look at all the gold background, symbolic of heaven. Um, but the other expensive colour is the blue, lapis lazuli. Um, it was a semi-precious stone mined in Afghanistan and transported over uh, to England. So air miles, not that there were airplanes back in the 1300s, but, you know, travelled a long distance. Um, and then the stone was ground up and mixed with um, egg yolk uh, and then painted onto the surface. Now, this type of painting is called egg tempera, all these materials. And egg tempera is very quick drying <clears throat> and that meant that it's very difficult to get subtle gradations of colour. And this is one of the amazing things about this craftsman, he was very, he, she, we'll see, um, was very, we don't know, uh, was very skilled um, because if you look at the folds and how the colour subtly changes or the wings that go from white to black, um, it really reflects that skill of working with egg tempera that was very quick drying. Uh, last thing I think I wanted to say was about the mushrooms. Did you find them? They are just down here. Tiny, tiny. I have to zoom in on the National Gallery website. Uh, and mushrooms apparently are a symbol of the resurrection. Uh, coming, things coming back to life, like Christ did uh, after he was crucified. Uh, if you've, ever, if you've ever cut the lawn and uh, cut down all the mushrooms, the next morning they've all popped up again. I guess that's maybe why they were a symbol of the resurrection. So, there we go. That is the beautiful and very lovely to look at. Um, hopefully calming the brain. Uh, Wilton Diptych in the National Gallery. An example of international Gothic style. So we're going to move on with our next painting to artists trying to make things look more realistic with the early Renaissance. And so we're going to look at Masaccio's, uh, if I can find it, Virgin and Child. Here it is. Um, and I have three questions. Have a good look at it. What is the baby doing? What position is his hand in? Have a good look. Work out what he's doing and the position of his hand. And how many angels are there? And what are they all doing? I'll see you next time.